Hey, it's Tab from the FreeFly camera team. Uh, got some exciting news. We're launching a new camera, the Ember S2.5K, April 15th, Monday. We will be at NAB showing these around, and I wanna give everybody a quick update as to what we got going. Um, so there's three things that I think people are gonna be confused about with this launch, so I just wanted to hit those first and clear up any confusion. So we have developed a new active EF mount. That's what you see here. I've got my 50, my old 50 millimeter Canon EF lens. I've had this forever, I love it. It's on Ember S2.5K. Is a locking EF mount and it's active. So we have electronics in here so we can control the lens uh, through the camera from the app, um, on the from the camera body if you want, or via the API remotely. And so this will be an option for all existing Ember bodies. This is exactly the same. The one caveat there is some of the early embers that we shipped are missing some things on a circuit board that allow the active mount to work. And so for some customers, if you do want the active mount, you will have to send it back up to us, send it back to us, we'll upgrade you to, to make it compatible with the active EF mount, send it back to you, um, but you'll be good to go. Super nice EF mount that we developed in house, locking ring, just like you'd expect. Really nice to use. Let me just kind of get a... Um, and we're shipping all S2.5, oops, I missed, S2.5Ks with this mount. And a little bit more on that, the E-mount that we originally launched Ember with, Sony asked us to no longer produce that mount. Um, we complied with their request, and so we're no longer making that mount. That's, that's what necessitated the switch to the EF mount on this uh, new camera, S2.5K. Next thing that people will be confused on, S2.5K features a new type of flash called PSLC. And that's what allows this camera to have the durability and life cycle on the flash, on the SSD that allows us to do pre-record, which I'll talk about later. So this camera can do unlimited length pre and post record. It's only limited by the size of the drive, which is a really cool feature. And that isn't buffered by RAM or anything like that. It's recording directly to flash. So as soon as you save the clip, you're ready to get your next clip and there's no downtime, no waiting, no nothing. That's really cool. That PSLC drive will be available <clears throat> for all Ember users if you want that pre-record option for your existing 5K body um, as an upgrade. We'll do it for you, or we will send you the drive and the instructions on how to do it. Uh, the next thing I think people are going to be confused about is which one do I want, 2.5K or 5K? And so 2.5K, uh, lower resolution, much faster frame rates. I would say the way I would think about it is... 5K is probably the right choice for the majority of customers, unless you have a very specific use case that necessitates that you need to go up to 3,000 frames a second or, you know, up in that range. So, you know, there's a bunch of scientific, industrial, uh, defense analysis use cases for 2.5K that are super compelling. That's just kind of how I would think about it. So everybody should get the 5K unless you're certain that you need the 2.5K. Um, and with that, I want to just drive, dive into what is the 2.5K. So uh, this is my 2.5K. Um, it's the exact same body size and layout as 5K. It's got a different G-Pixel sensor, which is a quad bear variant. Um, and basically what that does is it trades off some resolution uh, for speed. And has it's a different sensor, um, the different sensor layout than the 5K. So it's got... 9 micron sensor pixels and the 5K has got 4.5 micron. Let's see, at 2.5K resolution, 16 by 9, we can shoot 2277 frames. And if you want to drop down to 2K, you can get 2779. And then if you want to go with a little bit lower height of 864 on the height, you can get all the way up to 3563 on frame rate. So it's quite a bit faster um, than S5K, and you'll see that in the launch film. Uh, that we published. There's lots of cool use cases there. Um, it's got active EF mount, which we talked about, and there's a variety of other mounts that we have available both in the FreeFly store and then also in third-party ecosystem. There's these C7 adapters. There's a RF uh, uh, M mounts. They have Nikon mounts. They have a whole bunch of mounts. So there's a pretty good ecosystem getting developed uh, surrounding Ember and all the things you need. Um, I wanted to touch a little bit more on PSLC. Unfortunately, I was gonna grab one of the drives to show people, but they're all built into the S2.5Ks that we're getting ready to produce. But it, it, it just looks like a M.2 SSD, similar to what's natively in the Ember S5K. But the flash has a little bit different um, 
layout. So you get about 10 times the endurance um, that you'll get out of the stock Ember S5K uh, SSD. And so this means that you can record continuously for roughly 10,000 hours or 75,000 terabytes. So, um, which is needed because the, the way the S2.5K works with pre-record is basically a workflow where the camera's sitting here ready, you arm it, and as soon as you arm it, you're recording everything that happens after that arming, uh, depending on how, how much time you set your pre-record to have. So you can set your pre-record you know, to be one second, two seconds, 10 minutes, whatever you want. Um, and then when you trigger it, uh, when you trigger the camera, it'll actually grab that chunk that you started. You know, if it's 10 minutes when you armed, you'll grab 10 minutes prior to your trigger point, And then as long as you want after that point. And the really unique feature on this is the second you close the clip, you're ready to do it again. Um, which is very rare in high-speed cameras. Usually they're buffering to RAM, and then it takes a ton of time to off offload the clip to the SSD and then be ready to shoot again. So we've really optimized um, for uptime on this. Uh, let's see, logistics on S2.5K. Uh, we are announcing it April 15th. Uh, there'll be a bunch of NAB cruising around feel free to shoot with it there and talk to the team they were we anticipate the first unit shipping may 1st and then there'll also be an, a big update package firmware update for s5k as well at the same time which will which i'll dive into now so s5k gets new frame rates a bunch of new faster frame rates so s5k features will now feature a mono mode that will be exactly the same frame rates as s2.5k so if you have S5K and you want to do some scientific stuff, you can drop into mono mode and get very, very fast performance. Um, and then, let's see. So S5K will go up to, in color mode, will go up to 1946 at 864 high. Or it'll go up to 3563 in mono at 864 high. So that's, that's a nice upgrade for 5K, which will add a lot of value. Um, that's the mono binned option. So that won't, uh, that, the crop factor will stay the same in that mode, which is kind of nice. Um, and then PSLC drive will be an accessory upgrade for S5K if you want it. So again, you can send your camera back in, we'll change it out, or you can change it out yourself. It's a fairly easy process if you're comfortable building computers and laptops, stuff like that, not a big deal. There's a couple sill pads you need to make sure get installed correctly, install the drive, pull the back off the camera, put the back back on, and you're good to go. Pretty simple. We'll have a nice video that walks you through that. Um, the active EF option, so you, you will need to send your camera back in to get updated to the latest electronics if you want that, or if you just want a dumb EF mount that it's applicable to anybody, the interface is exactly the same on all of our lens mounts, so you can just unbolt the thing, bolt it on your ember, and you're good to go. Um, logistics for S5K, the... This, all the app and the new firmware and all the stuff will release um, May 1st. So that's the, that's the date when your S5K will turn into a, a better, faster, more fun camera. And then we have lots of stuff on the app. So this is kind of what we dream the app. We've, we've got a release that does what we dreamed the app would do all along. So we've got, I've got this one plugged into USB to my new iPhone Pro. Um, and I can do control. I can do live preview. And I can do playback from here. And I love this because I can get rid of any monitor and just have this to shoot, to analyze, to export just as quickly as possible. And so this is just as simple and compact and fast as I think a camera can be. And I love it. App still um, in testing right now, but, you know, the, it's just internal testing at FreeFly, but everybody's loving it. So I've got control of aperture. I've got control of focus. I've got full control of the Ember. I've got live preview on the on the camera or on the iPhone, which is great. Um, you can do it over. You can do control and playback and preview over USB or Wi-Fi. I tend to use USB just because it's so deterministic and fast, and you don't have to deal with like connecting to Wi-Fi. So that's been my preference so far. Um, and then there will be new apps for iOS, iPadOS, and macOS. And so all the feature sets will be matched amongst those three things. We also have stabilization for S2.5K and S5K. 
Um, it's extremely simple and brutally effective. It uses the internal IMU and the camera and a bunch of fancy math to, um, to you know, stabilize the footage in whatever way you want, FPV, handheld. You just put in the lens focal, focal range or focal length and then you know, set your settings on smoothness, crop factor, hit stabilize, and you get really nice results right off the bat. And then um, new for the Ember line on the app is Amplify. So we will have Amplify, and there's some nice demo clips on the website and in the launch film to show what that looks like. But basically, it's a signal processing technique, like a mo uh, motion amplification. So we shoot at a high speed, and we figure out um, areas of interest for motion, and then we amplify those so you can see them real time. And we have a bunch of customers, and we use it internally too for, like if we're building a new drone and we're trying to figure out a resonance at a certain prop RPM, you know, people will go and test fly and they say, hey, the thing was really shaking when we were at 1900 prop RPM, wonder what's going on. And we can film it at that range and then see where, they're, where the airframe or the structure is resonating and allows us to iterate and quick fix things really quickly without like getting bogged down in too much simulation. And I know there's a bunch of other drone manufacturers that are using this to analyze and improve their airframes and structures, which is super fun. Um, I think that's it. I think that's what we got going. When, in other just fun news, we built a clear Ember, a 3D printed clear one, which is pretty fun. So you can see all the internals. Uh, we got this beautiful guy that Charles made with some late, do you remember the name? The Instagram person that did this? This is like a custom, Ashley, custom anodized version, which I love. Um, and then we, we have some new accessories here and there on the website. So we'll just keep building out the ecosystem there. But I think overall, big message today, new camera, 2.5K. It's our fastest one yet. It's the fastest implementation of ProRes that we're aware of. So uh, Shane really fought hard for that, um, which, which is fun to see. And then, you know, the other part of the story is S5K is not left behind. It's got tons of new features and functionality that I think are going to make people very happy. And then we'll be at NAB next week. Ansel, Henry, Brian, you're going? Okay, three people at least will be there. Banji? Yeah, so the small crew will be there with us 2.5Ks and iPads and cameras and demo it and give us feedback and tell us what you like, tell us what you don't like. Uh, thanks for supporting the camera company and allowing us to build these fun products.